set up like that for yeah. like 30 years. Yeah, it was a great idea. I got it on my desk. I put allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Begin with the minutes from the 916-19 board meeting. I'll entertain for a motion to accept. I'll move. Moved by Nancy. No second. Second by Chris. Questions, additions, corrections? Any? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? None. And we'll move into public comment. Thank you. Hello, my name is Gary Reinhardt, station manager for Daklin Radio. Um, it's that time again, budget time. And I would like to uh, <coughs> renew my proposal, my contract with the town. I have written a letter. I'll hand this to you guys. I'll give two to Dab so she can get up on the bottom. Before I do. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Gary got two on. Yeah. yeah, well, one for Uncle Bob. Or Bob. Heck. I said, she probably. All right. A quick uh, read it. There's, I have others if anybody here wants a copy. Uh, Dear Lake Pleasant Town Board, this proposal is for the 2020 fiscal year for Daglin Radio services from to the town. From the last year to this year, we have increased our YouTube views from 61 in 2008 to 151 in 2019. Radio plays have reached about 35 listens this year. Unfortunately, the radio server we use does not allow me to go back to a year ago, so this is just a number for this year. We're asking for $39.95 a month and $9.99 per specialty meeting. This is the same price we asked for and were approved for for the 2019 <coughs> fiscal year. The terms of our agreement would remain the same as they were in the 2019 fiscal year. Meetings will be recorded, then broadcast the following Thursday at 7 p.m. and a YouTube video will be released that Saturday unless there are extenuating circumstances such as mass internet outage, or mass power outages as both interfere with this process. Meetings will be held at youtube.com and are free to access for anyone. Thank you for your time and energy in this matter, and I hope we can continue our partnership into the next year. Sign me. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. I think we'll press this up the next because we presented at the meeting. Anyone else? Hello, Samantha DeRochers, Youth Rec Director. Uh, just with an update, we have a Utica Commons hockey game planned for October 19th. I did 36 reservations and we have about 20 of them filled. So we still got a couple weeks to get kids. I have five of the six chaperones that I'd like to have to make sure with all the 36 kids. Uh, we also have a tentative hockey game for Adirondack Thunder planned on October, or excuse me, November 10th. I'm looking into possibly expanding the Halloween party that the Lions Club does with the school on the 25th. Right now it's in the planning stages. I'm waiting to hear from a few people on if they can be there to help. If we will have DJ through Gary, um, I'm going to be doing a dance afterwards from 7 to 9, 9.30. It's a Friday night. I didn't think it was too bad because most of the older kids will probably be staying for that. If not, then I want to do just a few more games and give them a little more activities for like the older kids. Um, unfortunately, there are not going to be uh, the after-school dance lessons with Ms. Katrina this year because the only day that she was available were Tuesday afternoons and there's library club with Marty that day. So the other, other thing I'm going to be looking into is possibly in November is possibly working with the Senior Citizen Center and doing something for Thanksgiving to get the kids and the seniors together to do something for the community if they do anything. And that's what I have for right now. All right, thank you. Can you send that to us in writing, Sammy? Yeah. Thank you. 
in the I don't mean to Sammy in that bill that we had on my credit card that's the deposit for the tickets for um the Adirondack hockey game correct I don't know if everybody saw that I didn't have a receipt on because it, it was just a deposit yeah okay, okay. If nobody else has anything, we'll move right into highway. Ready? Okay. Um, wasn't here at the last meeting, so some of this might be a repeat. Uh, paving is complete for this year. Uh, we put the shoulders <coughs> that very soon after that, the shoulder material. Um, I think everybody's very happy with the job done. I know I am. Um, it was hot mix, not cold process um, so it should be 15 to 20 years before we have to repave those roads with the standard usage that it has now uh, we hauled all our sand in the county finished hauling their sand into our shop today we have made a verbal agreement and we're going to with this board's permission make a formal agreement with the village um, housing their sand at our shop and they load at our shop also what that does is, is limits the number the amount of duplicity as sand washing away at the village plus gives them more room keeps everything in one area and we can mix the sand inside of the concrete floor you know better for the environment um, when the village needs sanded or salted sand, they have it readily available. Um, they've been using our, you know, not our salt, but the county salt, you know, whenever they need it. But it's keeping everything in one place. How much salt did they use, roughly? Do you know? Salt, um, maybe four or five truckloads a year, as mm -hmm. far as little dump trucks, not tractor trailer loads. I want to clarify that. So. So Half maybe 30 yards? Yeah, 30 yards maybe. That's a guesstimate. I know they have it very accurate. It's when their roads build up with, because most of the time they don't have salt mixed with their sand, so their roads build up faster. Yeah. Um, the flag out in between here and the uh, medical center has a light on it now. I know it was asked probably this summer at some time. Um, we also were asked to paint the steps and put up a sign on the gazebo, and those two things were done. The tennis courts, um, there's been questions about refurbishing, painting, um, having a professional come in um, to assess our tennis courts. Uh, we did that today. They showed up this afternoon in the rain, which actually, I didn't think about it, is the best time, as they said, because they could see the real water shows the uh, potholes and the divots, yeah. craters. Um, and the one at the county courthouse, they basically said is just needs painting and restriping the lines. I assume the board wants me to include pickleball lines in that place when they redo it. Um, so I, I told them to give me a price on that. Then we went to the Elm Lake Road tennis courts, and that's a whole other story. Um, besides for the cracks down the center lines and such, there is a lot of super underneath problems there's rocks coming up there's craters um, it really needs to be to be brought up to snuff take the fence down and redo the whole thing like we did the one at the county courthouse 15 years ago um, the, the substructure is gone um, drainage is probably not adequate either um, He's going to get me a price on just crack filling and painting, but you know, by a couple I, of years, maybe. It, yeah, two or three years max, and then we're going to be right back in the same problem. 
putting a fresh coat of black top over the top of what's there is just wasting money. Because we got to fix what's underneath. Is that something your department would do, or would you have to hire it out? We could fix what's underneath, to tear it apart and do that. Mm -hmm. um, but the fences would have to be a professional. The nets, bracing would have to be professional, and then mm -hmm. we'd hire Gorman, our paving company, to <coughs> pave it, mm -hmm. and then this company would come back in to paint and spray. Okay. So. Yeah, we could do the, the bulk of it, but um, for fencing and netting and all that is definitely not us. So, so you're getting prices? I'm getting prices mm -hmm. on the uh, painting and stuff of that one up there, and then we'll see what we want to do as far as budgeting in the next couple months, or if you want to do it in a couple years, if you want to, you know. Try to do a capital project or something, but it's you, know, you have a large and amount. just a ballpark figure of what it might cost to do everything needed there down here. Ballpark, big guess, fifty thousand. Okay, so ballpark. Maybe we should think about starting capital fund, right? And reserve fund something for two years or three years and or five years, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Does it really get that much use? Do you know? That I don't know. Yeah. I know. I, I mean, I drive by. I never see anybody there. We've had some complaints though. Right. Yeah. About the condition. Yeah. Okay. So I'm sure it has its regulars that you know it's closer to the village. So yeah, rough idea. And there was two tennis that. balls in it today. So. The what? There were two tennis balls in it today, so well, somebody, whoever didn't pick up. Somebody's <laughs> using it. That ballpark figure I'm just painting the one at the courthouse? No. no okay. Not. He said it would have it to me tomorrow or the next day. Okay. So, that is an, a lovely nice packet of lost colors and schemes and everything else. But, um, we are brushing Golf Course Road. I know that was passed upon. Um, ran into rain and such. We'll be back there tomorrow. Um, county is donating their man lift for the rest of this week, so I'm going to try to use as much as I can. A lot of overgrowth there. Um, snowmobile trail grant money. Um, coming up in the budget season, you'll see that we put in that we get $30,000 and we've received nothing. They have not gotten around to doing 2019s, never mind 2020s. That should be coming next month. So we normally get June, we get our 30%. Here it is October and I called them today and now we haven't gotten to it. So they're having staffing issues at Capitol and we're paying a price for it. Um, that's long and short of it. So where does that leave us at this point? Thirty thousand dollars in the red. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any way you look at it. <laughs> what does that mean for next year, too? Well, next year, right now, our phase one was completed and approved. <clears throat> Normally, we would have a check by November. Right. And if they haven't finished phase three of last year, I'm sure they haven't even looked at phase one. For this year. Oh, no idea when or, we might or see two, it. I mean, sorry. They didn't give you any idea? No. I mean, it's, you would assume that the grants are still legit. We're in the second stage of it, but just they're running way behind. So. so you don't anticipate it coming this year, huh? I anticipate, well, I would hope to say, guess. That we'd get our phase three from last that we're supposed to get in june before the end of the year mm -hmm. that would but how it works for the budget is 2000 the year of 2019 we get our phase three of the previous year which mm -hmm. is the last payment and mm -hmm. we get the first payment for the 2020 in november so that's you know it's never a doesn't go by our calendar. It doesn't go by our calendar years. Okay. Our budget years. Mm -hmm. So 
No, but we're this 2019 budget could technically be twenty twenty one thousand dollars. Well, it should be. Red, and then next year's budget will be. So the money comes ahead. Yes. Okay. If it's received even next year, it right. would be put back into this year's budget. Okay. If you know it's oh, coming. Yeah, we we assume it's coming. Yeah. Um. So the next is trucks. We um obviously received our new truckman working fine and in that we end up with 215 the other tandem that we not i suggested that we sell um put up on auctions international um, and i'm still saying that we should do that that being said 212 our little mini dump truck went for inspection two weeks ago and failed um, one of the things that we failed, there's not the part that we need, is not available in the United States at this point in time. What was that? New, okay, used, truck. or reconditioned, okay. or aftermarket. And to make it even better, GM is on strike. And according to the Chevrolet dealerships, they can't get any special order items from them now until the strike is over. So this renders the truck completely useless. Um, to 2009, I would like to get it fixed before we put it on the auction, but um, I, my suggestion is we put it on au the Auctions International with 215, the tool, and then replace it next year after the first year in this budget. We'll have the money from the two sales, the tandem and that one, but you were talking about a one ton? A one ton. There's two options. Replace with what we have now, which is about $67,000, $68,000. Or, that's with the plow. Or if it drop down to a one ton dump truck. And that's $53,000 to $4,000. So, thirteen dollars or $14,000. Um, $50,000, $60,000, whatever. Um, it's a matter of $15,000, <coughs> which we could then put towards just a, a cabin chassis for a bigger dump truck. Would the one time do the job suitable? Yes. Okay. We'll use 212 for 212 now is the parking lots here, plowing, plowing and salting mm -hmm. for also the sander for not only here, but all the driveways and such. And also in the summertime, this is the, the catch, is when we dig graves. That's when it backs between all the graves and such. But, so the, a little smaller yeah, one. Here, it's going to be small. It's, we got, you know, we previously had tried to use a single axle, regular full size truck. Did not turn out well. Yeah. I'll just say that. Um, the size of plywood go on that? Nine, or... Yeah, nine and a half, but be the same as on the one that we have now. Same as on, okay. Same size. So graves? What does it do with graves? When you dig a grave, you, you have, have to so many square yards of soil, mm -hmm. and you put it in the truck, and haul it away, so that there's a flat surface all the way around the grave, so people can stand all the way around it. Oh, well, then bring it back later. Then we bring back sand, so it doesn't. Oh. We don't have rocks and such oh. going around it. Okay. So no, we don't use the same material that comes out to go back in. Because some of our cemeteries are not um, built out of sand. <laughs> Nothing up here is. <laughs> <laughs> we grow rocks. <laughs> okay, so the 2012 is a 2009. The 215 is a 2004. Yes. That's a tandem though. That's a yeah. Yeah. beast. That's one of our full-size plow trucks, 215. How many miles on that? I don't know. August of 2018, it had 160,000 miles and 9,020 hours. There you go. And I remember us discussing ago. that. Yeah. Over a year ago. Over a year ago. Yeah. And it's, uh, 
We already voted to replace that one. We did re 215? Yeah. yeah. We have the new one now. Yeah. Oh, but we still have the old one hanging we around? Have, we still have the old one here. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yes. Okay. So if we sold, sell it, it's going to be plow, swing, the whole box, everything. Which should turn a decent amount of money. It's now a steel box on that. Yeah. I'm hoping 25000 or so. Is the guessing. Just for that, that truck alone. And then 212 we can't sell it if it's not running. It's running. It just can't be inspected at this point in time. Well, somebody got One pass inspection, let's put it that way. Is somebody going to buy one that <coughs> can't pass inspection? Because they're not going to be able to get the part either, right? Well, that's unless they happen to have it another one there or whatever, we'll make it very known that it's, you know, this is the part that's missing. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I mean, the strike could be over next week and I could, we could order it. But we adamantly checked the internet. Two wheel drives, you can find this part all day long, but mm -hmm. in this particular chassis, we can't. And now I'm still- out of them. No. no. Mike would know. No. We've been on strike for a month already. Yeah. And what do you want to replace the 212 with? Either the same truck, basically 5500 or 3500, which is just a one ton. Uh, more of a contractor series truck, which we used to have before two, this 212. This is just, a, uh, it's instead of an 11 foot box, it would be a nine foot box. Um, just a little bit smaller. Still would do the same job, but more popular. Be more so the parts are way bit more and better readily for, available. So that was cemeteries too. Yes, and it would be smaller for getting in and out of the cemeteries, and so on and so forth, and cheaper. Oh. So that would be your recommendation. That's what I'm recommending. Is there any of them on the state contract? There are oodles of state contracts for those. Okay. Um, I have two different dealerships that one 2020s, let's put it that way. 2019s are li very limited. Um, reason being not so much color because quite frankly color doesn't do anything but um, I would like to keep it red. But the state contracts, trucks the way they're set up are 19s are hard to get. They can order the state contracts in, yeah. you know, not once in this Guna contract. I mean, with that piggybacking off opens it up a lot. But yes, there are trucks available. The 5500 that I was talking, that was a 19. He has eight of them still there. So that tells you that people aren't buying that. But the one tons, people are buying. That's why there's no you know, 2020s, they have to order them in. So what happens if we can't replace that truck before the end of the year, before winter? We buy a sander that goes in the back of the three quarter ton trucks that we have right now. Okay. And salt the parking lots here and driveways with that. We were talking about doing that anyway. Right. And but then we buy a plastic have... sander, you know, and put it in it, and we'd be down a truck. So it would have to be, you know, take the fuel to, you know, take the fuel tanks out of one of the, put the plow on it. Yes. And then hopefully we would have a new little dump truck by next spring for spring. cemeteries. Right. Is that that work? Right. Okay. Well, there's options. All right, anything else? Buildings? So, no. Um, I don't know if you want to, before we go off of that, do you want to put any of that on Auctions International? If so, we need a resolution. Can we do that now? Fine with me. Either one or two or both, or and then we can come back with prices that 
real figures, real numbers, and say yes or no to the what we get. The same. You know, we don't have to just take whatever columns we had. I can bring them back to the board upon board approval. So. I'd say at least 215. Yeah. Is that one? Yeah. Okay. We're both on. What the heck? You never know. Yeah. I'll move that we put both vehicles on. I'll second that. Upon board approval. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Pass. Okay. That's all I had. Okay. We'll move into old business. Uh, first item I have under old business is uh, we talked about a, a, a hiring a surveyor to uh, establish uh, the main high water mark on Sagadag Lake. Uh, I contacted three surveyors. One of them has gotten back to the price of $250. Currently, they have to work from the benchmark at the courthouse. And uh, the cost would be two hundred fifty dollars. Yep, to be uh, a resident on Caucus Road. Um, Fred Rickle. Do you know Fred? Yeah. Yeah. Is it Rickle? Rickle. Rickle. Yeah. Fred Rickle. Yep. So, do we want to do that? Uh, sure. All right, I'll, I'll contact him and uh, have him uh, yes. take care of that for us. He said it was something he could do on a Saturday, even while he's up here. So. Okay, so I would move that we authorize Dan to hire this Fred Reichel to establish the mean high water mark at 175 Golf Course Road for $250. So, I'll second. by Chris, second by Nancy. All in favor? Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, the next item I had was procurement policy. Chris, uh, where are we at with that? Um, the most recent changes the board desired are printed in orange. And I would just, I don't want to vote on it yet. I would just like to know if those changes are okay with Randy and Debbie and the rest and the board. And if so, I'll put them in the regular black type and wait a week for my head to clear and read it again. And okay. I'm, I just want to make sure we get this right. And did you have a chance yet, Randy? I read it. Mm -hmm. Is, does it address the concerns you have? I believe so, yes. Okay. I, th I think we're real yeah, close. Yeah, I got down about four pages. I was like, I know. <laughs> yeah. Exciting. I, I was telling Nancy, I think I'll have it memorized soon. Mm. <laughs> All right, then we'll table but, that until the next meeting. Yeah. yeah, I'd like to keep it tabled. Okay. And the, but the board is authorizing the changes. Mm -hmm. Is there any other old business on the board? Hearing none, we're moving to new business. Um, oh, I have something. I'm business. sorry. Go ahead. I was just wondering the status of the salt contamination across from Town Hall, how that is going. Um, as far as I know, Bill was going to be up to unhook some of the RO systems and put it back into storage at the town. Have you heard from him yet? No. You should. Very, oh, October 15th, I believe, is when he's going to be doing it sometime shortly after that. And at that time, he was going to do another water sample. Okay, so. and the Hawk drilling bill, that's just about 20000 is Again, it? Again, I sent it to the attorney, and they said, anybody can send you a bill. Uh, obviously, but is there a way that we can get something in writing from the attorney that will cover us somehow? Because this is getting bad. <laughs> I mean, it's like nineteen, almost $20,000. Yeah. But, um, okay, I'll ask them. Um, I actually sent the last bill to her, to Laura Baumier, and I haven't heard a response. She had recently got married. I believe she's on her honeymoon. Okay, well, we'll let her have that. But, 
thing, but uh, I think it's important that we get something on the record that they've contacted Hawk or, I mean, to me it's scary to have $20,000 owed, whether we believe it or not, you know, it's still out there. Well, it was documented that we didn't know it, so, but I'll ask her for something reference Follow up. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, also in the conversation with the town attorney, um, we'll move into new business, is the notice of the removal of personal property on 175 Golf Course Road. It was suggested that uh, a date be picked, and I would suggest that we pick a date after the Mean High Water Marsh is established and has to be posted on the shadow box and in the paper. The date that mm -hmm. I think would be removed. Well, the, at this time, we'll wait and see how we end up with. Um, for the mean high water mark. So we'll move on to uh, the next item. That would be the uh, chamber presentation. Donna? Sally Ben Fitch, chamber director. You all got my third quarter report. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I just want to touch on a few things and then Pete has a few words. The last report we talked about Genevieve Zeiser's memorial. I just want to clarify the amounts and what happened. Um, when I gave you those numbers, we were not with, done with the second quarter yet. That was third quarter. No, we weren't done with the third quarter yet. This is the official report on that. Um, it was held on July 14th down by the uh, gazebo, and we unveiled the plaque. And through the generosity of this community, we were able to raise and donate in her name the following. $750 to the Speculator Volunteer Abrams Corp. $650 to Mountain Valley Hospice. and. $400 to Albany Med's anatomical gift program for a total of $1,800. And the other thing I just want to touch base on, again, this is not official because technically the Bear and Wine Festival was in the fourth quarter, but you all should know that over 800 people came. And I want to thank the board and specifically Supervisor Wilt for your support and enthusiasm for this program. We're looking forward to next year's event. Thank right. you. It was a very good event. It worked out. You did, did a lot of hard work and uh, even had her husband out there. <laughs> My best volunteer. Put a full day in. So. Thank you. It went over real well. DEC was very, very happy good. for the turnout. So. Pete? So as president of the uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, we're requesting an increase of total of uh, 2500 This is to address uh, and in increases in phone bill, phone <coughs> charges, uh, electrical, rent, and subscription services. Um, it's a nominal amount, but we would appreciate uh, the board's positive response on that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I more really come up to the front. Uh, Pete, it's not public comment period right now. Or, um, Shorty. What's that? It's, um, is this something under new business? Yeah. I got something under public comment. It's, it's business, but. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be getting to public comment period. It's, the second it's about one. The Apple Press, that's all. We'll be there shortly. Sorry. Um, we had a request from Karen Cone. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry that I didn't get to be put it on the agenda, but it came in kind of late. Um, this is sort of retroactive based on the position when we hired Roxanne Cook to be full time at the library. Um, and this is just kind of fell underneath the wayside. But we never assigned a civil service title to her. And after a lot of discussions with Kim Byrne up at the county, we have come to the conclusion that we are recommending that she is a uh, library assistant that is a civil service position 
she will be appointed provisionally. So a provisional appointment as library assistant. There is a test for it. She was given the qualifications for that. She met the qualifications to take the exam. Kim went all through the hours that she had worked from part-time to full-time. And so she was able in that respect to meet the qualifications to take that civil service test. So we will let Kim know that there were a couple of different titles that uh, that Roxanne could have chose, and she chose library assistant based on the duties that she does here at the library. So that'll put her pretty much in the civil service system officially, and her title will be that with the town as well. So when I talk to Kathy about it, she will be notifying Kim with a pink slip, but apparently there's a pink slip of paper that gets passed between the county and the town. It's white. Saying, <laughs> it's white, maybe it's white now. <laughs> it used to be pink, now it's white. Uh, saying that her official title is library, provisional library assistant until she passes the test. Once Kim knows that, she will formulate the test, Roxanne will take it, and the word provisional, once she passes it, will be off of that. And just as an FYI, Sherry is classified under the civil service system as pharmacy manager. So when we refer to her as director, that's an in-house title. So that's not a civil service thing that doesn't go between the county and the town or anything. It's more or less internal memorandums that we call Sherry our library director. So there is a civil service designation for her as well. That's pharmacy manager. She has taken that test. She passed it. So that's all done. But I just wanted to you to know where the path that Roxanne is taking. Yeah. So that the town and the county are all on the same page. Let me just clarify. You said pharmacy director. Oh, I see. Pharmacy. And I kept saying pharmacy technician, yeah. too. When I was talking to it, because I'm used to technicians. Library, please. The underscore library. I did it, and I don't even notice it. Don't even notice it. Thank you for correcting me. Otherwise, we'll have Roxanne pushing drunk. <laughs> so, okay, so if you have any questions about that, I mean, I just wanted the, the town and the county to all be on the same page title-wise in, in this civil service thing. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Roxanne's going to be pushing pills. From anyone? Uh, then I'll entertain for a motion to pay the bills. Uh -huh. I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris, from you. I think I have a question. <laughs> Let me look at my notes. Oh, yeah. Um, 629 It's $250 to William Parcel for RO maintenance. I yeah. thought Bill Dievendorf did that. He does, but um, what's his name? Stubbs. Stubbs system is a little different than the other ones. It requires, it's inside of a shed. There's oh. some other plumbing that Bill doesn't do that needs oh. to be done or it'll freeze. Okay. Uh, it's the way it's been done, I was told, for, for many years. And uh, uh, I think... I think it's gone up a little bit from last year. Mm -hmm. So something we should talk to him about. Uh, well, does it require one visit a year, two visits a year? Actually, it's two. He comes in the spring, has to remove some of the plumbing that's part of the RO system okay. and reinstall, reinstall the spring. Well, it doesn't yeah. seem excessive if it's twice a year. Yeah. But I mean, I think Randy like, answered my other question. I was wondering what we used all that hot mix for. I thought it was all on Longview Drive now. Oh, that'd be, that'd be a nice road. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you did a lot of shoulders then. Hmm. Okay. Most of that hot mix is on Old Page Hill Road. Anything else? And, well, yeah, I'm kind of curious. Um, we're paying Dakland Radio in advance. We have a voucher for October for the two regular meetings and the four special meetings we've scheduled. That just seems odd that we're paying for a service before we get it. I didn't check that. I didn't catch that on the date. I thought that was from the... Well, I, okay. it, because it said four special meetings and two regular uh, meetings. Uh, and yeah. I was like, wait a minute, did we meet six times last month? <laughs> uh, no, we didn't. Um, it's always been... Uh, I've always
come in and give in the bill for the coming month to Kathy. Um, and this is how I've done it ever since we've started. If you would like me to wait till the end of the month and do it like the end of the month and have you pay retroactively. I think we have to. That's way we okay. Do that. that's I don't think we're always, allowed to pay in advance. Well, that's just how I've always given it to her. So okay. That one, because I always remember like first of the month. Mm -hmm. right the first. Now all you gotta do is remember first of the month, send last month. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Yep. Anything else? Nope. Do we have a motion to pay the bills then? I'll move. Mike? I'll second. By Nancy. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Yeah. Okay, we're back to public comment. Shorty? I'm sorry. The, uh, a week ago Saturday, the Historical Society had their annual Apple Fest down to a pavilion. And we had a great turnout, but I would estimate probably about 2,000 people showed up. Uh, 2,000? Yeah, as you know, 2,000. Wow. 2,000. It was, it was supposed to start at 10 o'clock, and people started rolling in about 8.30, quarter to 9 while we were setting up. And it was like that right until quitting time at night. It was just a steady flow. So, you know, 2,000 would probably be an easy estimate. And this is, the Historical Society is totally a volunteer organization. I mean, they've been doing it for a few years now. I can't remember exactly how many, but it might be four, it might be five. But, and we did the uh, program over the school earlier this year, and we had 100 people show up for that. So uh, it's helping the community, you know, bring people in, and. I think once in a while we have to tune our own horn because we kind of get ignored when we talk about the library or the, excuse me, I was by it, so I want to sip off the library, the museum. They do a lot there at the museum. We have a good turnout all summer going there. And uh, so anyway, I just wanted to let you know we had a great weekend and a lot of people that were there. A hundred people showed up for what, Shorty? I couldn't hear you. Oh, the program on yeah. creating the reservoir. Right. Okay. There was a hundred people showed up for that. Okay. And when we did that French Louis thing here earlier, we had 75 people there and had to turn the rest away because it wouldn't hold any more people. So uh, I think, you know, the historical society, like I said, they're all volunteers and, and once in a while we. Yes, we're a little back, so. Right. Shorty, Shorty, could you report how many people actually visited the museum this season? Because at our meeting, you mentioned it, it was quite impressive. Yeah, last year we had a little over 200, and we're running great about the same this year. It's been, it's been steady. That, like I said, that one Monday, we had 20, 23 people show up, and we opened at 10 o'clock, and we closed at 2 and it was 4.30 or 45 before we actually locked the doors and decided to go home. So, but it's been, it's been a good summer. You know, a, lot of, a lot of them repeats with family members bringing people in and showing what we have. And so, like I said, we thank the town for use of the building and uh, we're preserving the history of the area and stuff like that. I mean, hopefully we can do it for a few more years anyway. We're all getting up there in years. So. Yeah, get some, we got one young member in our crowd. She's 13 years old and that happens to be my granddaughter and she loves it. So. Uh, that's good. Thanks for your time. All right, thank you. Anyone else? I would just like to say as a business owner that I would like to see more events like the Wine Fest brought in by the Chamber. Full disclosure, I sit on the board, but as a business owner, strictly speaking, we saw an increase in business and I've talked to a few other folks. I know that it was at least an hour wait to get into any of the restaurants on Saturday night after the Wine Fest, and I would just like to see more of that. So I know they only asked for 2500 but uh, I think a bigger increase is 
warranted. The more things like that we can bring in, the more people are coming into town and the more the businesses flourish. And if you want to be a thriving town, you have to have flourishing business. Right. Very good. Thank you. I got a question down. I'm not Ronnie, it's kind of like pleasant. Uh, Randy, when they redo the, uh, if they redo the tennis courts on uh, Elmike Road, are they going to be put up to regulation size or would they be? That would be all in the planning part of it. Um, Is that going to be part of the planning? You, well, I would say at least enlarge them to what the courthouse. Okay, because one of them is a whole it's, lot shorter. Yeah, a whole lot shorter. So, Thank you. Yep, I will take note of that and make sure it's in there. I'm going to add to public comment to, just to say something when Chris, when you were talking about the uh, tennis courts. I live on Elm Lake Road. I go past those tennis courts multiple times a day on some days, and there are many people who use that tennis court. Okay. So I can attest to that. Thank you. I go past mm -hmm. there a lot. Okay. Hi, Holly Smith. Um, I, uh, <clears throat> I I do understand that the tennis courts up there are too short, or at least one of them is. And I'm wondering now that the burn pit is no longer used for burning, whether that space we could put a full-size tennis court in there, and no, probably has room for parking and still room to collect, you know the. Uh, the branches and whatnot that uh, are, are ground up. But uh, that seems to be a wonderful flat space and it seems to be underutilized the way it is. Well, consider it. I, I would think that just enlarging the area that's there now would be the avenue I would look into, but and where they are now, just yeah. widening it at that level. Yeah, I'd be a little concerned about that road in the spring. Well, yeah, it would be. Yeah, it's a flood plain. But that's something to look into. <laughs> well, I guess yep. as a non business owner, uh, I would like <laughs> to applaud, <laughs> literally applaud, both the store yeah. and the chamber of commerce. I certainly was at Apple Fest, and you can argue the numbers, but it was a lot of people. Uh, these guys had a clicker, one volunteer just counting heads uh, in a very specific way because the only way to have a successful first anything, uh, or, I'm sorry, to have a successful second one is to have a really good first one, particularly when you're dealing with vendors who need to make a profit. Uh, this was a really big undertaking uh, by Donna and by body and, and the board simply because of all of the entanglements that come with alcohol. Uh, and I thought it was done remarkable. Uh, usually these things get that good at the fifth year when everyone knows their job. This was really a professional job. It's a trooper out there, somebody counting, other people greeting. Uh, all of the vendors seem to have brisk trade and uh, you know 800 some odd people, a really great first effort. And it didn't seem to bite into another event that's been being held on a fall Saturday at Oak. So uh, just kudos to all of these folks. Uh, we're, we're blessed to have this kind of volunteer. No, I did. The only complaint I heard was from the, some of the vendors was the Wi-Fi problem. Yes. Um, yeah, that's something that we're looking into right now, looking at possibly boosting from the firehouse to solve that problem when, there's, right. when that occurs. Uh, um, we understand that was a concern. Some of them couldn't take orders because of the Wi-Fi problems, but uh, hopefully we get that straightened out. And uh, Oktoberfest was a big hit too. If anybody was there yesterday, there was a that was a mob scene. Yep, they did very well too. So thank you, everyone. Um, anyone else? And nothing round table, Ted. Yes, I just want to let you know that the uh, financial statement was handed to me today from the fire department. Okay. So um, as, as of September 30, 2019, in my office, if anybody wants to take a look at it, James Ricky handed it to me today. Is there a digital copy? I don't know that. We have to ask her. 
Do you want one of them to you? Do you want me to have her send you one? I'd love to have a copy. Oh, that's for sure. That'd be great. No. Nancy? No. Chris? I'm good. Mike? Randy? All done. Oh. Um, any reason to go into a detective session? Anyone? Very none. I'll undertake for a motion to adjourn then. I'll move. move by Nancy. <laughs> Second, by oh, sorry. Mike, in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank you.